So we're here at uh, Linaro Connect. Correct. So uh, my name is Jeff Underhill. I'm the director of server programs at ARM. Uh, we're here at Linaro Connect Hong Kong. We're just kind of getting towards the end of a pretty intense week. A lot of sessions discussing open source software, status of the ARM ecosystem. And uh, the last day of the event here, we have a bunch of demos. And uh, this one in particular, we're going to talk to some guys from Cavium. They have their Thunder X platform here, um, which is an ARM V8 based server. 2015 is really going to be a very interesting year for the server program. We've got multiple silicon solutions in market. We've got initial tier one platforms shipping. Uh, the open source software ecosystem is coming along at a real rate. And uh, so let's take a look at some of that. So first of all, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Prasun from uh, Kyabiam. He's Hello. going to walk us through the Thunder X board and SOC and share some of the details of the hardware we're looking at here, and then we'll start to look at some of the software. So, Prasun, why don't you uh, tell us what we're looking at here? It's, it's great to see Thunder X. Sure. So, I'm, I'm Prasun Kapoor. I'm uh, the director of software engineering for platform software for Thunder. And what we're trying to showcase here is the um, high performance 48 core Thunder X device. Yeah. And, um, the main purpose of this yeah. demo is to show uh, virtualization features of the Thunder X SOC. And we have a couple of platforms here and a couple of hypervisors that we are showing running on them. So this one is an internal eval board, uh, which is running the Zen hypervisor. And this, uh, I think Manish will talk through the details of uh, this demo. But the primary thing we are trying to showcase here is the ability of uh, directly uh, assigning um, virtual functions to uh, virtual machines. And on, on the other side, we have a KVM demo that's running on our rack-mounted One U platform. And this is uh, running uh, KVM. And the uh, objective of this demo is similar to what we are doing on the Zen side, where we are assigning SATA controllers and VNIC virtual functions directly to virtual machines, which are running uh, different OS distributions. All right, so uh, so can we uh, get a demo of? Uh, so hello, so who are you? Yeah, okay. Oh, we start over there. Okay, so hello. Hi, my name is Manish Shaki. I'm a technical lead at Kevin Networks. Yeah. And I work on Zen Hypervisor. So uh, we are showing a Zen Hypervisor running seven virtual machines. And, uh, showing different distributions. So is this uh, illustrating what what happens right now? Yeah. Yeah. You have a Thunder X with uh, different virtual functions. And these virtual functions and different uh, SATA drives, these are directly assigned to particular uh, virtual machines. And uh, as you can see, the blue arrows show the network virtual function PCI pass through, and the green arrows show the AHCI PCI pass through. We are showing different distributions running in different virtual machines. We have a Ubuntu Trusty, we have a My MySQL running in OpenSUSE. We have uh, open embedded uh, LAMP image from Linaro, which is running in Apache. And we have <coughs> Ubuntu running ODP applications, which are traffic generating applications. Also, we are running uh, a Twitter application, which is getting feeds from Twitter uh, based on, on different search criteria and storing all these uh, tweets inside the MySQL database. Uh, so we have two kinds of network. One is a directly assigned uh, network device and the other is a PV network where you can see in the black arrows so uh, the DOM 0 has the Zen uh, uh, bridge which is giving IPs to uh, uh, different virtual machines using a virtual interface and uh, there is a DHCP server running on this machine in this network and on this machine uh, they are also showing uh, a VNC on DOM 0 and these are the different consoles. As you can see that the Excel list, which shows all the list of virtual machines running, we have the OpenSUSE, Twitter, and, and I can just uh, show you again the, the time that they are running. And there's a number of vCPUs and the memory that they are showing. Uh, right now, uh, we have this. I just run again this script. Right. Okay. And the script is getting. So, yeah. so each of these windows is showing. Uh, uh, so basically, on, on right here on, on on this board, you're running 
seven virtual, virtual machines, machines at the same yeah. time. Yeah. All right. So, what's the main purpose of all these uh, uh, virtual machines and uh, doing that kind of virtualization? Uh, so there's this uh, couple of uh, main target areas that we're trying to hit. So in, in cloud applications where people want to co-locate multiple workloads and also the network function virtualization use cases where a lot of um, network functions are going to be co-hosted on a single platform. So since this platform has 48 cores and the ability of uh, directly assigning devices to those virtual machines, uh, I think this is an ideal platform for um, um, yeah. Running multiple virtual functions on the same platform. So, so virtualization is a big deal for ARM servers. So, I think it's one particular use case, right? Um, we're going to see a variety of solutions. People using bare metal. Some people using virtualization. Some people using containers. Uh, what we have here is a technology demo that shows a broad spectrum of those solutions, focused on virtualization. But you've seen Open Embedded. Uh, you've got Open SUSE, Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat, KVM, Zen. You've got MySQL, you've got Apache, just a variety of components that you would find, you know, combinations of those in a, in a typical uh, uh, solution. And so really it, it's kind of a technology demo at this point. So virtualization is a good way to use all the cores and everything? Yeah, it's one way to uh, achieve, I guess, full performance entitlement from a machine. You've got 48 cores in there. Um, you which, could is, which is a giant, this is... I yeah, would say it's the this biggest is an impressive, ARM. This is an impressive chip, right? It, I would um, say maybe it's the biggest ARM processor ever. Maybe. Maybe. But, maybe. I, 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 yeah, I, I can't make that claim. So, it's certainly a, a, a big one, yeah. And uh, so there's also, uh, when people talk about OpenStack and stuff like that, is that also on the virtual or is it going to be a different kind of way of doing ARM servers? No, so OpenStack is kind of a cloud management framework that sits on top of virtualization. So virtualization is a, a underpinning technology, if you will. Um, and then it provides, you know, storage solutions, image services, uh, compute. Um, so those two things kind of go hand in hand. But, and the uh, virtualization is some something that uh, your future customers are really looking forward to, right? Absolutely, not just future. The present customers are also looking for uh, the solution. And so what we're showcasing here is the enabler technology for OpenStack. So once we have the hypervisors running robustly on our platform, um, th those virtual machines can be managed using OpenStack. So let's check this out. So hello. Hello. So hi. So so who are you? Uh, I'm Vijay. I work with Kavyam on basically on the virtualization technologies. Uh, here we are uh, to demo the both the virtualization uh, hypervisors, uh, type one and type two hypervisors, uh, running uh, here. Here I'm taking care of the. So you Kavium have a uh, you have a, a Thunder X in here. Yeah, this is a Thunder X uh, chassis board. Is uh, one Thunder X in there? You have one Thunder X. It has comes with uh, two uh, socketed board with uh, 96 cores as well. So it can have a, a, it, potentially there's 96 cores in this. This potentially this board has a 48 cores and it can come yeah. with a 96 cores as well. We have that. Right, well. and mm -hmm. here you can see uh, this. Uh, it it is booting a, a host kernel from the USB port, and you have four SATA controllers that, which are uh, running with a different distributions yes. with the PCI uh, pass through di direct mm -hmm. device assignment. Yeah. So here uh, you can see this uh, demo where uh, we are assigning uh, device, direct devices assignment yeah. through PCI pass through yeah. for yeah. all the distributions running as uh, as a guest on the host kernel. And the KVM hypervisor, and this, and we have virtual functions directly uh, assigning, directly assigning uh, to the virtual virtual missions running on the KVM hypervisor. So it, it runs Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, uh, uh, and these Red Hat, and a simple uh, BusyBox application. And oh, it could run at the same time, or yeah, all are running at the same time. All right. And you can see here. Uh, running at the same time. You can have a KVM post, which is yeah. a simple busy post one. Yeah. And yeah. here uh, is a open, open source test running, and a Red Hat test running, and able to in a simple busy box uh, with a device assignment. So uh, everything at the same time? Yeah, everything at the same time. And what's the, what's the purpose of running everything at the same time? Is it just demo? Yeah, this is a demo, and that is that is the whole uh, point of having a virtualization. You can have all the virtual machines running at the same time on a hypervisor with a it's having its own uh, device assigned, either Ethernet Ethernet device or a SATA device. How many is the maximum to run at the same time? You can run as many as you want. As many. To replace uh, complete hardware capability, having 48 cores, etc. 
It's a big system. You can run hundred things many as, at the same time. Yes, you can run as many as possible. And it's a, it's a is it a great way to use the 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 multi core uh, uh, yes, system to have that yes, kind the, of stuff? The whole point of virtualization is to utilize the hardware to the maximum possible extent to utilize the hardware. All right. So, um, so, so, uh, how's it been to work at Linaro with Linaro and uh, getting things optimized and uh, getting to the stage? Uh, it's been a great journey. We have been a part of Linaro for a number of years now, and uh, we have seen the ARM V8 ecosystem evolve. And now I think it has finally reached a point where we can run such complicated demos. So it's been a long journey of both software and hardware enablement over the last couple of years. It's pretty pretty awesome. And how about for you? Like uh, the ARM V8 was announced uh, th three years ago or a yeah, more? something like that. So I, I've I've been at ARM for uh, about five years now in the server program. So it's like. I mean, it's super exciting to get to this point. We've made so much progress. Uh, we're seeing, you know, high-end 64-bit systems come to market. Uh, this week, we've seen a, a lot of activity on the software ecosystem front that's maturing nicely. A lot of the foundational pieces are in place, as you can see here from the demo. So I think we're at that, that inflection point. Uh, 2015 is going to be the year where we'll see first deployments, and then 2016 is when I think uh, we start to see that that nice ramp taking off. So yeah, that's and it's really times. it's really smooth. It's really working out great, and the potential is huge, right? Yes, absolutely. And uh, so this is pretty awesome. So been talking a lot and working on with em people have been working with emulators and stuff, and now they can work with real hardware. Exactly. Let's, let's, let's check out some, some more you have, you have to show here. So this is the Twitter yeah. application running. Uh, so we have a Python application which is getting feeds from Twitter. And this is saving the tweets in the MySQL database over a PV network. You can see we are searching on the keyboard in there. And these are the number of feeds it's getting and that, that's the number of feeds it's like saving in the database. And we have a, a demo which is showing uh, the ODP traffic generator application. And this is the receiver application. These are running in different virtual machines, the dedicated virtual function, uh, and uh, uh, they are connected directly. And this is the Apache server which is streaming the 4K video, and this is the top, so it's not using much of the... Uh, so it's easy. It's really easy for uh, the Thunder X to do uh, uh, 4K video streaming. So that's just one of the things that can happen, the streaming video. To so the, the over here. The video is stored in a SATA disk over here and it streams to the, uh, the PCI pass through network. And this machine is running a VLC that's streaming the video cool. on this uh, monitor. And, it's a nice. and you've been running this the whole week, right? Yeah. You've been showing it, using it, showing it off, and yeah. that's very cool.